Hello and welcome back to the 8-Bit Guy. In a previous episode, I did a review on the Game Boy Camera. And while I thought it was cool, I wasn't exactly blown away by the high-resolution graphics. Well, I got a lot of emails of people suggesting that I try something called the Worm Cam. Well, I've got one now, so let's try it out. Okay, so this is a new old stock product. I find it interesting that the plastic for the packaging has yellowed. There's no way into this package other than to cut it open. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, this is a serial cable to link to your Windows 95 PC, but it uses what appears to be a USB Mini B connector, but is most likely not USB in any way. So one thing I noticed right away about this product is that it appears to have something that slides under the cartridge port, but there are no pins. So there's no actual connection to the memory or address bus. The only actual connection it has is via the link cable port. So what happens when you power this thing on is that it has to download the code from the device over the link port into the Game Boy Advance's internal memory. So this takes a moment. And once it does come up, it's not super obvious how to use the thing. In fact, I couldn't get it to work at all, but I eventually realized I needed to remove this little tab to allow the battery to make contact. Alright, so up to this point, I was thinking the product was probably going to be pretty cool, but I couldn't actually figure out how to take any pictures with it. I actually had to read the manual uh, and you found out that uh, you have to push the right a button on the back of the Game Boy Advance to actually use as the shutter button, which actually kind of makes sense. You know, you can, you know, go like that and take a picture. But here's the problem. There's no viewfinder on the camera anywhere. There's no physical viewfinder that you can actually like look through and there's no live preview on the screen anywhere. And uh, the reason for that is because the data is so slow coming from the camera that once you push the shutter button, it takes like 30 seconds for the picture to actually come through. So by that point, whatever you were taking a picture of is probably long gone. Um, this is really annoying, but the real problem is I think my camera is defective because all I can get, and I have tried, I've tried taking pictures outdoors and indoors, and I've tried all four different lighting configurations, and I can either get uh, black images or white images, and occasionally I can get an image with kind of an outline of whatever it is that I was trying to take a picture of, but I just couldn't get anything better than that. And <laughs> When I looked up other reviews of the camera, I found a lot of people complaining about the same dilemma, that it's virtually impossible to get a picture on this thing that actually looks like anything. However, I did see some photographs that samples that were taken and they looked a lot better than what I could get. So I still think mine may be defective. Maybe just all these years of uh, sitting in the package. I don't know. Anyway, so all I can say is this is a piece of junk. Don't buy it. Let's move on to something else. I just got back from the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, where I shared a booth with these three awesome guys, and I gave a presentation about the new game I've been developing for the last year. But I was also given some interesting products to take home and check out. Uh, this one is a new Pac-Man style game for the Commodore 64, uh, which comes on floppy disk. Kind of interesting, but I'll check this out later. At the moment I'm more interested in these. These are called the Ardu Boy. Uh, let's open the Tetris version and see what's inside. All right, so here it is, the Tetris microcard. <laughs> it sounds like a Game Boy. Okay, neat. So I realized that adding a little projected copy of your current piece is something that more modern versions of Tetris usually do, and I tend to prefer the original where you have to judge it better. However, the screen is so small on this guy that uh, the projected piece does help a lot. The controls are surprisingly effective. They're easy to push and do provide some tactile feedback, making it much better to play than a modern iPhone or tablet version. It sounds like there are at least two voices here, one for the song and one for the sound effects. Either that or they're just alternating it so quickly with the music that it just blends into our ears. Apparently it uses a rechargeable battery and is charged with a USB cable. However, it does come with this really nifty USB cable. I've never seen one quite like this before. Uh, basically it's missing the metal piece. I'll try plugging it into this old titanium power boat. It doesn't come with one, but it should in theory work with any power brick like this. There is a little LED that lights up to let you know it's charging. So how big is this thing really? Well, compared to this business card, it's not quite the same dimensions, but it's almost identical in size to an old PCMCIA card from the late 1990s. In fact, it's pretty close to the same thickness too. Let's take it apart. I want to see if there's any other chips besides the microcontroller we can see through the top. I'm also 
curious what sort of battery cell it uses. Alright, so here's what the little buttons look like. And on the back there's a very thin lithium pouch cell and a piezo speaker. And there appears to be a lot of writing under the battery cell. Well, let's move on to the other Artiboy. Uh, this is a more generic device that can play many different games. Let's open it up. Here's a little card. Artiboy, card sized gaming. Neat. It actually looks like a uh, credit card sized Game Boy. It's kind of cool that you can see the guts of the device, but I could also see it being cool having an opaque colored top case so that you could only see the buttons in the screen. Neat. So it already has a game built in. However, you're supposed to be able to copy new games over to it. I'm not familiar with this game. It's really well polished though. I would imagine there are no sprites or anything, so the entire screen is probably being redrawn many times a second. But considering it's a monochrome screen with pretty low resolution, it probably doesn't need that much CPU power to do that. Comparing this unit with the Tetris unit, they are essentially identical in size, they just have a different layout. Although it does appear that they use a slightly different microcontroller. So, let's have a look at the specifications for this thing. It runs an Atmel Atmega32, so believe it or not, it's actually an 8-bit CPU, which makes it perfect for my channel, right? It runs at 16 megahertz. It has 2.5K of RAM, which is not much, but it also has 32K of uh, flash memory to store the program code and other data. It also has an EEPROM with 1K built in. I'm not sure what the advantage of the EEPROM is over the flash, but anyway, that gives it 35.5 kilobytes of total memory. The display is OLED, so it's visible in both light and dark situations. It has a pretty low resolution of 128 by 64 pixels, and even the original Game Boy had more pixels than this. It appears to be a 1-bit monochrome, as I can't see any grayscale being used. Ok, so what if you want to download more games? Well, if you go to their website, there's quite a list of games in different states of development that you can download for free. And I don't really recognize any of these names, so I'll just pick one at random. Um, Omega Horizon. <laughs> ok, so I saw this button for Upload to Artiboy and I thought, surely it can't be that easy. And it wasn't. So I tried downloading the file and it says I need to download this program called the Artiboy Uploader. However, I can't find a version for OS X, so instead I'll have to download the entire Arduino suite. Alright, so I did that and here's the Arduino program. I've never seen this before so I have no idea what I'm doing. Can I drag and drop? Nope. Can I open the file manually? Nope. It seems that this program only wants to deal with source code and not with compiled binaries. So I'll switch over to my Windows 7 machine. I can install the uploader. And I was able to import a game into the uploader. However, when I plugged in my Artiboy, Windows couldn't find a driver for it. So I had to download and install the whole Arduino suite after all just to get the USB driver set up. So I plugged it in again, and this time it successfully installed the driver. So let's see if I can upload Mystic Balloon. Well, it's doing something. However, my Artiboy just rebooted back to the same game. However, I tried it one more time and it did actually work. So let's have a look at Mystic Balloon. There's a bit of a flicker showing up on camera, but you can't see this in person. I think this is a neat device, probably for learning how to code with Arduino or perhaps microcontrollers in general. But uh, this thing costs $50, and it's kind of tough to get games onto it. On the bright side, this is a relatively new product, so in time it may at least get easier to put games on it. Still, I don't think it's ever going to be a popular gaming platform for people just wanting to play games on it. I think this is definitely targeted more towards developers. So I wanted to show you one more thing that I was given in Portland. This is the first issue to a new magazine called Old School Gamer. And I've got the plastic here so we can have a look inside. Ok, so uh, let's have a look at this. It looks very well made. Can't complain about the quality. Oh look, an advertisement for the National Video Game Museum. Uh, th that's actually here in the Dallas area and I've been to that and I can vouch it's definitely worth checking out. So yeah, a lot of articles and relevant advertisements. Um, I'll have to sit down and read through this, but overall, I like it so far. And it also comes with this uh, fold-out poster, which is pretty cool. So, anyway, I appreciate all the different gear that was uh, given to me at the uh, Portland uh, Retro Gaming Expo. And um, I also really enjoyed running into Ben Heck and uh, Metal Jesus and all of my fans that came to see me at my booth. So I'll see you guys again there next year. And uh, as for the worm cam, I gave it the one fate that I thought it deserved. Well, at least we got to see what's inside of it. <laughs>